Some blocks in Minecraft are so rare that you probably didn't even know they existed. Like, look at this one. Or what about this one? Or do you know how to get one of these? Well, today we are going to be collecting every rare block in Minecraft, starting with the easy ones, all the way up to the ones that you've never even heard of. Now, according to every YouTube comment ever, Deep Slate Emerald Ore is the rarest block. And I already have one of them in my world. Same with Deep Slate Coal Ore. In fact, in this chest, I've got loads of them. And what about the Snowy Grass block? That, that's pretty rare, isn't it? No, no it isn't. I've already got one of them. And in 1.16, I was constantly breaking them because Enderman kept placing them all over my house. Yeah, back in that version, if you lived in a snowy biome, this block was very, very common. But what about the Piglin Head? Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first rare block that I don't have. Despite 1.20 coming out eight months ago, for some reason, I just never got around to collecting it. And to obtain this item, I'm going to need a thunderstorm to get a charged creeper. But that means I've been waiting an average of six hours for a thunderstorm. And I haven't got time for that. But I wonder... Yes, I've got an idea. I'll kidnap this charged creeper from my mob collection and use him to blow up a piglin to get a piglin head. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? My plan is quite simple. I'm going to build a portal right here and connect it to a portal on the other side above the bedrock. Then I'll build a platform to get a piglin to spawn and chuck him in a boat. Then I can fishing rod him next to the portal and build a glass cage to trap him in. Now for the risky part. I need to lure this creeper through the portal. Then I'll go through a different portal and I now carefully need to destroy the portal, break the boat, and then very carefully ignite him, blowing the piglin up and dropping his head. And with that, I'm also going to fly to the raid farm to swap the creeper head so that I now have the full collection of mob heads in my bedroom. And there's actually a mob head even rarer than this one, which is the SB737 blockhead. Only 0.0001% of people have this one, and you can too in real life. I've teamed up with Blockheads to turn this design into a plushie. And he's even got sunglasses that you can put on too. They're only available for a limited time. The timer is ticking, so don't miss out. Go to the link at the top of the description and make sure to check it out. And the next of the blocks that we're going to be getting is the Headless Piston. Every time you break bedrock, one of these is created for a split second. But we are going to get a permanent one. It's going to require an end crystal, as well as obsidian, redstone, a lever, and of course, a piston. Next, I need to build a platform of obsidian with a piston here, a piston here, this in the middle, and a lever to be able to power them. Then I need an end crystal to go right here and to set the ground on fire right next to it. Now, this setup will make this piston headless, but it'll be a horizontal one. But I don't want that. I want one that's facing upwards. So I'm going to break it and instead place the piston in the ground like so, then connect it all up using redstone. I'll have to set the ground on fire again because it burnt out. Now I stand back, flick the lever, and there we have it. We have a headless piston. And as long as it's powered, it will stay headless. If I was to turn this lever off, it would go back to being normal. So the smart thing to do now is go underneath it, place a redstone block so it has to be powered forever. Then this lever can be flicked off. I can break the redstone. I can mine up the obsidian. And headless piston has successfully been checked off the list. And the next two blocks that we're about to get are meant to be impossible to obtain. You can't get them with silk touch. You can't collect them in any other way unless you use a cobweb. So let's grab 64 of these and head out in search of these next two blocks. I'm actually going to need to go to brand new chunks to find this, which is why I'm having to fly so, so far away. And once in the new chunks, I either need to search an ocean or a desert. Hey, look at this, guys. I know it's not so rare of a block, but it's free wheat, which is always worth taking when you see a village. Just to annoy the farmers, really. I'm pretty sure that I am now in new chunks, and an ocean ruin is just what I need. With a free Nautilus shell as well, they're kind of rare, aren't they? But they are nothing compared to what I'm going to be... What the heck? Two in one ruins. Okay, that is actually really, really rare. But it never happens when I'm actually trying to find them, does it? Anyway, now we can focus on getting this block, and we need to kind of dig around a little bit. And in fact, I could do with just flying over here to grab a bit of wood, because we are going to need some blocks. Then we're going to build a little border around here. And here you'll see that I have two suspicious gravel. Now, if I grab a torch, place it down and drop gravel on it, you'll see it becomes an item. However, if I do that with suspicious gravel, you'll see it just breaks. So how do we obtain it? Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is where the cobweb comes in. We are going to stack a load of these cobwebs underneath the suspicious gravel. I've got a little bit overkill here. I didn't need this many. But then we simply break the block and we drop the entities onto the cobwebs. And watch what happens if a block falls for more than 30 seconds. Yep, it pops off and you get the item. Look at that. We have 
suspicious gravel in our hands. This should not be possible to obtain. I could place this if I wanted to, but for obvious reasons, I'm, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to keep it, keep it good. If I fall and, and break these copper, is this really an effective way to do it? I'm not entirely sure. All I know is though that it, it did work, and I think that yeah, there's another suspicious gravel there. Let's. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Yes, they're very easy to break if you're not careful, but there's another one here. This time I'm going to be much, much more careful, and I should be able to do it by only placing four cobwebs. I'll, I'll do five just to be sure. Let's break that block. They are going to fall, and after 30 seconds, they become an item. And with that out of the way, now I either need to find a desert or a warm ocean ruins, so that then I can get the suspicious sand. This right here looks promising. Yep, I can cover this one on all sides, and then do the exact same thing again. There we go, it's as easy as that. And whilst I'm here, I might as well get a second one for good measure. And the other thing I should do whilst I'm here is kill a chicken. No let me explain. You see, I can use that feather to make a brush. And with this brush, I can do some archaeology because another rare thing to get in Minecraft is every single clay pot. I can't for the life of me find the ocean ruins I was just at, but, but don't worry, we can find a new one. And if I pop back home, you'll be able to see the shards that I've already got. But if I want to get every single one of these decorated pots, I'm going to need four of each shard. There are 20 in total, so I better fly far, far away and get busy searching the world for areas that I can excavate. And as it happens, I'm actually in one of the biomes that can have trail ruins. Yes, the old growth of birch forest. Aha! And there is one here. Let's see what shirts we can get. Well, I found an armor trim. <laughs> They're actually rarer than the pottery shirts. You just can't write it, can you? Anyway, we have got the first one here, and it's Danger which is a brand new one. And I also love how danger is a picture of a creeper because this is nothing more dangerous in Minecraft. Also, it turns out I've already got two dangers, but we're up to three. We need four in total. So it's a good find nonetheless. Here we have another one and it's called Friend. I, I wish I had some of them in real life. Oh, wow. Look at this. I've got burn. It really is all starting to come together. A music disc. Very, very nice. That is the ruin entirely excavated. I can put everything that I've found into this shulker box. And look at that. I've now got six friends. That's definitely something that I, I can't say in real life. And I've now got every single shirt from Trail Ruins apart from Sheaf and Howl. So right now the priority is to search all the other structures and get even more new ones. And of course, I've also got to search the warm ruins because there's six exclusive shirts to be found there. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the world's smallest mesa. What on earth is going on here? I've absolutely no idea, to be honest with you. I feel like I've done nothing but search, but this is the final one that I need to have every single shard from the cold and warm ocean ruins. Also got a load of sniffer eggs from it too. And so next I need to find a desert because the remaining shards are in the desert temples and the desert wells. This village has more wheat that I can ransack and it's not exactly what I've been searching for, but I've just spotted a trail ruins, which does still have a couple of shards that I need to find. And this might be one of them. What have we got? Yes, sheaf. And that right there is the howl one, which is the final shard that I need. So there's no point hanging around here. I can now aim 100% to find a desert. This is the biome that I've been looking for. I just hope that isn't the world's smallest one. Aha, I've found what I'm looking for. Now, once we're in here, we need to go to one of the... Co here we go, and we can start brushing. Already found the first shirt, as well as a couple others. And this temple has been fully searched. And now fully blown up as well. And the search continues. Is that a diamond? I didn't even know you could find them in here. Well, that's very nice indeed, isn't it? And that is the final one I need. And as we've collected them, they've been getting rarer and rarer. But I've still not got a single one one of the rarest shirts in the game because to get one of them we need to find one of the rarest structures which is proving to be no easy task at all aha oh well i've found one and it's what's inside the well that is most important because there is always two suspicious sand and these can have a 25 percent chance of a shard in them so let's have a look. Okay, we might have just got two, which is fantastic. Two of the arms up ones. So we still need to get six more of these, which means doing even more searching. I found another one. And just to clarify, when I said 25% chance of a shard, or shard as the game calls them, I mean 25% chance of each one. So you get 50% in total of getting one of these. You can see we got a rubbish brick in this one. And this one, a suspicious stew. Are, are you kidding me? Is it even a good one? It just gives me night vision. All right. Why would I need that? It's broad daylight. Anyway, I'm going to keep busy and keep searching for the wells. And that is all of them. I think I've got every single one. Yes, indeed I have every single shard that I need. So now I can build a portal, go above the nether and fly back home. 
Next, I'm going to get busy crafting every single one of these. And then I have just the place for all of these to go. If I head along this blue ice highway, we can go through this portal and arrive once again at my collection of every single block. I also just heard lightning, which means it's a thunderstorm, which means I could get more charged creepers. And I think I've got to go for it. But this is where the collection ends. I'm just going to put this here for now and then quickly grab my channeling trident, boat all the way back, head to spawn, turn off the mob switch, and then mobs will be able to spawn around here. There's a creeper. Let's strike them with lightning, get them in the water so they don't burn to death, and then they can go into a boat. The thunder has stopped, and I now have loads of charged creepers scattered in boats all over the area. And this one right here is going to be name tagged and carefully lured back into the mob collection. And I'm going to use this one to come through this portal and get another piglin head. And as I was saying, this is my collection of every single block. But I haven't updated it since 1.20 came out, so it's missing quite a few. Now to solve that, I'm going to first expand this corridor and then I can begin placing down every single new block. There we go. I have to say, it's looking pretty cool, isn't it? But there is still a lot of 1.20 blocks that I need to add, which is why I'm expanding the corridor, such as every bamboo block, all the cherry ones, hanging signs, and then finally the sniffer egg, the calibrated skulk sensor, the chisel bookshelf, and finally the two new plants. So the collection is once again complete until the next update. And after that little side quest, we can now move on to the two next rare items. And one of those is the wool from a pink sheep. You see, a pink sheep has a 0.16% chance of spawning, which means in order to find one, we have to search an average of 642 of them. So now you can see why they are pretty rare. And on top of all of that, every time I see a pig from a distance, I'm going to think I found one and then be very, very disappointed when I get nearer. Well, brown sheep only have a 2.8% chance, so they're kind of rare, but nothing compared to the elusive pink one. And I've got to be so careful that when I do find one, I don't mistake it for a pig. Still no pink sheep, but I've found a woodland mansion. What are the chances of that? And interestingly, this actually might contain the other rare block that we're going to be getting. You see, according to this video, other than the dragon egg, the diamond block is the rarest block you can find in Minecraft. I'm not sure I agree with that, but as far as naturally generated blocks in the world, it is the rarest, and we need to find an obsidian room. This obsidian room is not in every single mansion, which is why it is so rare. And I've had a good look around, and it seems that this is one of the ones that, that it is not in. Maybe it is one of the rarest blocks. Anyway, I'm going to focus on finding that pink sheet. Apparently, I've just found the rarest structure. It's this random sandstone thing on land. For some reason, the game thinks that we're in an ocean. Well, we are. We're certainly not. I can find that, but can I see a pink sheep anywhere? Oh, no. Finding that is going to be much, much harder. I've flown over 10,000 blocks. So I'm thinking right about now might be a good time to repair these elytra. And then once again, the search can resume. Oh, my goodness. I found one. I've just found him. This is it. One of the rarest mobs in the game. Probably never going to need one of these ever again, so give me your wool. I really hope I don't in the future decide to make a collection of all the rarest mobs in Minecraft, because then I might need him. But anyway, that's not today's problem. Let's put this safely in the ender chest. And now to find that diamond block in the mansion, I want to find a village. Here we go. Now I just need a load of budding workers to help me. And some wood from your house. Sorry, sorry, sir. Yep, you're not going to be doing that job for long anyway. Now to get four of these laid out. And here you go, sir. Have some paper. And I'll be back when I've successfully managed to get loads and loads of glass. That's four stacks of sand. Next, I need cobblestone and coal for the furnaces. And whilst the villagers are peacefully sleeping with their eyes open, all of this glass will be smelted throughout the night. And now with the glass panes, I can upgrade the villager even more and craft compasses to get the Woodland Explorer map. Four of them should do it. You've been a great help, thanks, gentlemen. And I can now get out of here and track down the structures. The first one was pretty close. Does it have the opposite? I think it... Did I just get all these maps for nothing? I might have just found it already, ladies and gentlemen. Inside this obsidian, there should, in theory, be a diamond block. There is. According to that video, the rarest block in Minecraft other than the dragon egg. Well, these were a waste of time. I <laughs> spent all that money for nothing, which is kind of the story of my life. Anyway, now that we've got two more of the rare blocks, we can head home through this portal. And instead of having to fly 16,000 blocks back, we only have to travel 2,000. And I feel like I now have the issue that despite me collecting up all of these rare blocks, I don't really have anywhere cool to put them. And I can't really just keep them all here, no. 
I need to build the collection somewhere very, very specific. And the collection will also include these two suspicious blocks. I, I, I just can't place them down yet. The place that I'm going to build the rare block location is going to be at the God Particle Farm that I built in the last episode. You'll soon see why. But first, I feel like I need more XP. So if we go ahead and go like this, although I have no furnaces on me. That's an oversight. Good job this chest is full of them. Let's put them in the offhand, place them down. And if you didn't see last episode, this, yeah, gets you unlimited XP, as you can see. It's also a great way to repair all of my items. And with that, every single item is now successfully repaired. And now I'm going to gather up a few more levels because I am on an eventual quest to become the hardcore YouTuber with the most XP levels. I don't actually know what the record is, but if somebody does know, then please let me know in the comments. And that is level 11,000 reached. Okay, that is that is quite insane. There was that much excess XP that my player is still picking it up. I'm just about getting to the end of it. And as I said before, the area where I'm going to put all the rare items is going to be here. But I think this area is quite ugly. It doesn't need all of this here now. I think I can get rid of a lot of it. So I will mine it all up. But I have kind of run out of inventory space at this point. So I'll drop off these items. And then I can collect up the rest of them. Leave me with just a platform with the furnaces on. And of course, this still does work absolutely fine. Still gets me loads and loads and loads of XP. So you've no need to worry about that. And now to grab all of the materials that I'm gonna need for this. Pretty sure I've got every single thing. So let's begin the project. Starting with a brand new headless piston. Since that's going to involve blowing stuff up, I, I thought I'd be best starting with that first. So just like you saw me do before, an end crystal is going to be pushed into fire as a piston extends, like so, and we get a headless one. And then before I remove any of the redstone, I just need to remember to power it with a redstone block and it'll be a headless piston forever. So rare block number one is in the collection. There's going to be 35 in total, so I've got just 34 to go. And then around this, I'm going to have gold blocks. And these gold blocks are kind of going to be the stand that all of the rare ones go on top of. Should work pretty well. I, I, also, what <laughs> what are you guys looking at? Well, as long as they stay down there and I'm up here, I don't mind. <laughs> right here, I've marked out where each block is going to go. And now I'm going to add slabs as a bit of a pathway in between so that I've got something to walk on. And I like it being a slab lower because it makes it feel like the blocks that are on show are a little bit higher on their stand. And so you can kind of see how it's going to look. Let's add some more rare blocks, such as the Woodland Mansion's diamond and the Pink Sheep's wool. That can go right there, the diamond right here, and then the gravel and the sand can go either side as well. Five down, just 30 to go, and they're going to get a lot crazier than <laughs> the ones I've just done. And right at the end, I'm going to show you how to get the No Textures block, which, let me tell you, is very, very rare. But before that, the next blocks I want to get is floating water and floating lava. They shouldn't be possible, but we are going to do it. I'll start with the lava, and it's going to be above this block here. The method involves sticky pistons and slime. And I think when you see it in action, you'll find it pretty cool. So the way this works is we're going to make it so that the pistons can retract, but they can't pull the slime with them because there's obsidian in the way. Doing that is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And now for the moment of truth, watch what happens when I put lava in the middle. All right, looks pretty normal, doesn't it? But I flick this lever, it stays. I flick this lever and it still stays. I flick this one. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't retract. But then I flick this one. They both do. And still, it doesn't flow out. Finally, we can move this one. And we have a floating lava in the middle of this machine. Doesn't it look cool? I bet you didn't think it was going to work out, did you? But yes, because the pistons can't retract. Or should I say, because they can't pull the slime back. The game doesn't really register that a block update has happened. And so the lava just, just stays floating. Now let's do the same for the water. All the pistons are in. The water is down. And as I retract them all, I have floating water as well. And now we're going to get the rare blocks that involve using update suppression. This is where things get a little bit crazier. I got these glitched shulker boxes that you can't open in the previous video. The one where I built the fastest XP farm that gets you 89 million XP an hour. And these glitched shulkers act as update suppressors. And you can use these little update suppressors to create more glitch shulkers. And just to demonstrate what happens with these, we've got a comparator going out of it. If we break this, you can see it's, it's suppressed, the lever floats. And I need this suppressor to go all the way down here. So bit by bit, I'm going to extend it. To do that, we're going to need a lectern with a book and quill on, a trapdoor, 
Then we're going to point this into it. You can see it glitches a little bit. We do it a second time. We open the trap door. Then we break this and we need to replace it with a shulker box. I've got loads of spare shulkers here, so that is what we are going to be using. So let's do that. Place it down and now we have another update suppressor. It's a glitched shulker. And how do we extend this? Well, we just do the exact same thing again. Isn't it great? Using an update suppressor to create more of them. I needed two of them and I've got them right here. So what we're going to do is place a lilac here and a rose bush there. Then we're going to update suppress the bottom of them by placing comparators. And then if I just go and grab myself a deep slide brick, we can break this. Look at this. We've got a floating thing. We can place a block under there. Have you ever seen plants like this? A little, little half plant. Look, this is just a small plant. And once I box this in, we have what looks like a very unusual and very rare block. But this is only scratching the surface. Things are going to get much crazier as we go further and further down. Now, we do the same thing on the other side, but that means I've got to extend the update suppressor to go all the way along here and then around the corner. And then I can do the exact same thing with these two plants. And one of them looks very... Very strange indeed when it's done. Like, just look at that. It looks like some hairspray or something. It doesn't really look like the top of a plant. It looks it looks very, very strange indeed. This one's a little bit more noticeable. But anyway, the priority is we've now done 11 out of 35. And for this one, I actually need two of these glitch shulkers side by side. So let's go ahead, get this one. And then what we do is we just move this so that the lectern is one block closer. And then we do exactly the same thing again. And right here, I'm going to present to you the glitched glass. We're going to just place two of them like normal. But then we're going to place down these suppressors. We're going to break this one. And oh, it, it, it goes back to normal. It didn't work. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what happens when you place a block here and then you break that block? Now, it thinks it's connected to a block there, but it isn't. And this time, I've put three of the suppressors in a row, and I'm going to place down three fences, then some comparators behind, and then what I do is I, I break this one, I break this one, put this here, and we've got a fence that thinks it's connected, but it isn't. Right here, I'm also going to do the same for iron bars, and also a wall. And now this one's quite a cool one. We're going to take a piston and we're going to power it. Then we're going to suppress the base of it, break the back, and you get a pistonless head. Here we have a headless piston and here we have a pistonless head. Two very, very cool opposite ends of it indeed. And right here, I'm also going to get a pistonless head, but this time with a twist. A twist that's a complete, I'm actually going to need to go home to get something for, which is thankfully pretty quick through the nether. I'm actually heading to where my giant diamond tunnel bar is. Not because I'm here to get diamonds, oh no, but instead because, well, there is actually diamonds there. Although, <laughs> little side quest, not intentional. Oh, there's loads, by the way. That's convenient. I'm actually here because the machine is broken in this part. So I'm going to mine up the ancient debris. And I'm going to need a grand total of 36. There we go. And now to smelt them, craft the ingots, and then a block of netherite. What on earth am I going to do with this? Well, I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to create the world's first netherite piston. And whilst I'm at it, I'll create a diamond piston as well. And this next one's pretty cool because it's going to involve a bed. I'm going to place it like that, suppress the head of the bed, break that... And now we just have a half bed. And funnily enough, I did actually find one of these naturally spawned in my world. It was in a village where a chunk for some reason cut half of it off and it was very, very cool. This one's another simple one, but one that is very cool. The half door. And for this next one, I want to make the locked chest. Now this was only present in an April Fool's update. Well, it was an April Fool's joke in beta Minecraft and I'm going to remake it here. And I reckon the best way for me to do that is to do something like this. So we create a little suppressor there and then we can use that to turn this up. Oh, we don't want to fall as we're saying into a locked chest. Now this, as you can see, is unopenable. No matter what I do, I cannot get into this chest. It is completely locked. And then speaking of chests, we're going to need a couple more. We're going to place them right here. Then I'm going to get my comparators, point them into it. And I'm going to break this chest. And it looks like it's gone back to normal, doesn't it? Until you do this. And then when you re-log, it's a half chest. Look at that. How crazy does it look? Yes, you've got a, a half double chest. Have you ever seen one of them before? The real question I want to know is, could you sleep in one of these beds? And, and the answer is sadly not. And now for these next ones, I'm just going to use the flowers. Again, it's very, very simple. And instead of it being the top halves that I've got over here... I've got the bottoms. So these fellows are, are, are very separated from the ones over there. And then right here, we've got some more simple ones. We're going to have a floating lever and floating ladders by going like this. And once we break it, 
There you go. And these next ones are quite cool because we're going to do some floating blocks that shouldn't be possible. Starting with the cactus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it looks like on the bottom of a cactus. Right here, I'm going to need my hoe because we're doing some farming. I'm going to grow those potatoes, grow those carrots. And doesn't this one look so weird just to have floating crops? And then in these ones, we can keep it simple with a couple of floating torches with a floating dripstone right here. And we've almost done it. We've almost got every single one. We've done 34 out of 35. And many have called what I'm about to create next the rarest block in Minecraft. But let me tell you, it is not. And we are going to get it very, very easily. First, let's perform this tile entity swap and then do another one. And now I'm going to place a grass block right here. Can you guess what I'm about to do? We're going to place a snow layer on top. Oh, we've got a snowy grass block. Let's go ahead and suppress it and break the snow. And oh, it, it, it didn't work. Oh, wait, it did work. We place a block next to it and we have what many called the rarest block of Minecraft now in a collection. That's 35 out of 35 for in here, but there is one left. And that is the missing textures block, possibly the hardest one for me to get. This machine and system I've been using it is completely powerless to get the missing textures block. No, in order to get it, we're going to have to do quite a bit more hard work. But before that, I, I want to make this place look a little bit nicer. So let's go ahead and build up some walls. And I'm also going to make this bit look nicer by changing up the room quite a bit. First things first, I'm going to remove all the comparators and then very carefully change the floor to be quartz. Apparently removing one of these comparators lost me a furnace. Is it gone forever, the XP? Oh, that's sad, that is. That is very, very sad. I can put these... Let's get these comparators back as soon as possible. And all the other ones still work fine. Thank goodness for that. So that, that is why we have so many of them. Because if one of these accidentally breaks, we do have spares. And I'm adding obsidian in between just to give the wall more reinforcement. And there we go. That is the build completely finished. What do you think? I think it's a very, very cool area, isn't it? Full of very rare, weird, and wonderful blocks. Let's get this portal lit, so that's the way to get back easily. And in here, you can see, is the XP area. I'll, I'll probably... I could actually get all of the XP into that furnace again. But it would take like 35 hours, so I, I probably never will. I can always get more from the other ones, although I need I need furnaces to replenish it. Can't be forgetting that, can I? And remember, if you'd like to download the most up-to-date version of my world, after every episode, I put it on my Patreon, which is linked in the description. And now we can wait no more. We've got so, so many rare blocks, but there is one final one to get. And the only way to actually get this one is going to be to downgrade my world to 1.9. Admittedly, it's quite a few versions back, but it is necessary for the plan. And I'm also going to have to put all of my items in here because they, they just can't come with me. That also includes everything in the ender chest. Everything's got to come out. And as a replacement, I need some new diamond tools and new diamond armor. All of which I believe I can find in here. Yes, the tools I'm using up 10. Oh, look at this. This is fantastic. All of it can come with me. And then there's just a few other items I need to grab. This right here is absolutely everything. And the fact that it's nighttime is absolutely perfect. We're going to grab an extra pair of elytra just for good measure. Oh, and don't forget about my blockhead. Doesn't it look great in real life as well? Anyway, the final things I need is a little bit of obsidian and some flint and steel. Now, in the nether, we need to fly to some very specific coordinates. They're not that far away. They're at 776 -8 and the reason for this is because every time you downgrade a world, the seed changes to seed zero. So I know where everything is, and I know on the other side of this portal, there will be a desert. Not right now, there isn't, quite clearly. But once I do the downgrade, there will be. So I'm going to save and quit the world, and to change these four files in the world saves region folder to be read only. And here we go. Let's load up the world. Okay, we are... We're okay. <laughs> we're a lot higher up than I expected. But the reason we wanted to be in a desert was for Enderman. Now, I've got to try and get this guy into a hole. And then I can box us both in. All right, we're, it's me and you now, buddy. I do need him to put that sand down that he's got in his hand. He will do eventually. And in the meantime, I'm going to set a cactus off growing right here. And it needs to get to two blocks tall. Also, add more space around him so he's got more... Oh, okay, I didn't mean to make him mad. Oh, no. I I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> he's not going to pick anything up now that I've hit him. I think in this version, if you put him in water... Okay. Oh, well, that went wrong, didn't it? So now it's time for take two. And this time, I'm going to be quite a bit more careful. Well, the good news is he's now put the sand down and the cactus has grown. So we've just got to wait for him to now pick it up. And when he does, this is how we will get the glitched textures block. And he's done it. He's picked it up. And now all I have to do is first get rid of this cactus and, and make sure it's not in my inventory. And then I need to take him out 
Don't teleport away. There's nowhere you can go. You're staying here and we have got it. And just look at the size of it, by the way. It's absolutely massive. But yes, this is the glitched texture block. It's basically a cactus with a different data value. So the game doesn't really know what to do and, and doesn't know what texture to give it. So it just doesn't give it one. Now, in my opinion, it is very, very cool indeed. You can get more of them if you go and grab a cactus and chuck it there. Now, all of a sudden, you've got two of them. But there is some sad news. <laughs> there always is, isn't there? This block will only survive up until 1.12. If you upgrade your world to 1.13, it's fixed and the block is just a normal cactus. So I can upgrade my world back to 1.20.1, which is, is what I'm going to do. But when I bring the glitch block back, it, it sadly won't work. So let's go ahead and now change these files to no longer be read only. And as we load it back up into the new version, you can see I was telling, oh my goodness, it's raining animals. Okay, well, I, I don't know what to make of that. It's raining chickens. Anyway, I wasn't lying. Oh, what did I do? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, it slightly broke my world. But they're now just cactus again. So they are, they're a, a, a rare block of the past that we got to experience for a brief time. If I downgraded my world again with these in my inventory, they'd just stay as normal cactus. So I will leave them here. As a memento, I can travel back home. And that was a very, very cool episode where we got some of Minecraft's rarest blocks. And don't forget to check out my new blockhead. The link is at the top of the description.